America. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. You are watching a signing. Woo! Saved it. I, uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I've been recording a, uh, a, a TTRPG recently with some friends, and uh, I open each one with You're Watching Psychoto Party, the name of our show. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a little bit... It's, it's a reflex at this point in time. I'm only <laughs> laughing because I almost did the exact same thing yesterday, and I had to be like, Thanks for coming to my streamily you know what? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, also, hey everybody, say hi to Micah. He is driving in the chat right now, and we'll be looking at all of your comments and questions. So if you have any questions for me, drop them in the chat, and uh, we'll get to them between signings, etc. Uh, but hi! This is... it's finally happening! It was supposed to happen last week. Uh, we had a little bit of a shipping delay. So it's happening now, and I'm very, very excited. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you to everyone who showed up last week anyway uh, for our Q&A. But today we are going to be doing a signing. Woo! Uh, the store will be open through the signing. We're sold out of a couple things already. But if you wanted to grab a last minute print or a postcard or something like that, the shop is open and the link is currently on our Twitch page right now. Also, if you are a follower or a sub, we have special emotes just for the occasion. Yay! I drew them myself. We got Rico, we got Victor Rico, we got Hat Kid. Woo! Uh, there's some of my favorites. There's some of your favorites too, it would seem. So I would love to see lots and lots of emotes in the chat as well. Uh, yeah. Oh, there they are already. Yay. I'm so happy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, so without further ado, let's, uh, let's get around to this. Um, oh boy. Let's see what we have first. Okay, strong start. I'm very excited. We've got Victorik. Let's see. I'm, I'm, I learned a little bit yesterday watching, but I'm, I'm gonna have to remind myself with each one to put a number on the back because I'm definitely going to forget but for the first one for number one nailed it no issues all right Victor Reek and this one is for Monica let's see two and what do we have the art on this print is so pretty thank you uh, so for those of you who don't know, Micah and I do all the artwork ourselves. He does all the drawing and I do all the coloring. So most of the prints you see today are going to be my own artwork. The one exception is the Hat Kid print, which was actually illustrated by the official illustrator for Hat in Time, Jenna. She drew it especially for me and I love it so much and it is very special to me. Uh, but all the other prints and things you see today are going to be art by us. Yay! Uh, thank you to Freydu for your subscription. Thank you, Freydu! Yeah, imagine if I had a soundboard, I'd play an air horn, but I could just make an air horn noise. Pew, 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 pew! So there it is. <laughs> thank you. All right, what are our instructions for this? Wellspring of Wisdom. Yes, I could totally do that. Um... <laughs> Oh, Wellspring has two L's. Ah! Alright, there we go. And thank you very much, Monica. Yay! Woo! First down. Alright. And hey! Hat Kid, speaking of Hat Kid and the lovely art by Jenna, we've got our first Hat Kid. Oh, chat says Hat Kid on our release. Uh, they didn't realize I bought the first one. So oh, awesome. Well, thank you. I'm glad you could make it. Glad you could, could be here for it. All right. This Hat Kid is for Joseph Kalamia. Thank you, Joseph. Let's see. Huge fan of Hat in Time. Love it. Love it so much. It is an incredibly fun game. Um, could you please write something wrong with Hat Kid's name? Yeah, no problem. All right. Down here seems correct. Ooh. Oh, I got 
too excited from shouting the thank you. I wrote it in all caps. I hit caps lock on my brain, as it turns out. Oh, I write in caps lock. <laughs> Cause my, my brain has been caps locked on, along with Hat Kid's signature. All right, well, let me drop mine in. And what, huh, what would Hat Kid's signature look like? I'm curious. Um, I would say probably a hat. <laughs> Ta-da! And an exclamation point. That seems correct. <laughs> um, yeah! Oh, 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 I'm making this up as I go along, but what if I wrote an H and a T, and so it says hat? Nailed it. I think I've done it. I think I'm a genius and I've done it. I thought you were going to go full Kaito kid. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, with the little face and everything? I could, but, you know, just hat! With an exclamation point. Yeah, that feels correct. Um, there we go. Hat kid print. Thank you very much. Right. Next we have. Right. Next up is Yuzuki. Oh man, I uh, this is one of my favorites. Uh, I've been really so Yuzuki's kind of a comeback right now because the Wii Cross card game is finally has finally gotten an English release. If no one's watched it, the anime itself and the original card game in Japan both debuted years ago, and then the card game never made it into like English at all. There was definitely sort of a hand there were talks about it but it never happened and so the card game has been going in Japan for this whole time but they recently just sort of rebooted or revitalized the gameplay a little bit and that updated version is available in English so it's really exciting to see Wii Cross kind of making a comeback uh, I actually do like booster unboxings once a month as well so if you liked the anime and want to know more about the game or you just love anime TCGs and want to learn more about it make sure you're following so you get notifications every time we do those. The art is so cute, and the game is actually like a lot of fun. Like originally I just started collecting cards because I like the art, but as I've started playing it, it's genuinely really, really fun. So we can even talk about gameplay and stuff like that. It's a good time. I'm really happy to see Yuzuki here. Uh, let's see. Ooh. Try All right, Leo, question. Sure. Uh, if you ever worked a nine to five job, what was it like uh, doing your current work and scheduling Ooh, around there. Uh, interesting. I have worked uh, a 9 to 5 job, but not at the same time. So the 9 to 5 I did work was actually, I didn't have a car at the time, so it was about three hours away by bus. It was like an hour away if you had a car, but you know, to jump from one public transit to the next, it wound up being three hours uh, there and then three hours back. So I didn't have a lot of time for other things, including trying to work on voiceover stuff. I wound up doing a lot of like online things and online projects and stuff on the weekends because that was the only time that I had off. But when I moved, I wound up not being able to fit in like a voice actor schedule with um, a nine to five job. So I took on a bunch of extra contract work online, uh, not doing voiceover, doing a lot of like writing, a lot of editing, um, some ghostwriting, things like that. It, it was, it was lots and lots of little jobs that sort of just sort of accrued small amounts of money at a time to keep things afloat as I was doing it. And these days I don't have quite as many, but I still do a couple <laughs> uh, just to keep all the things connected. But. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard balancing that sort of job with a contract job that calls you in at all sorts of odd hours of the day. So um, if you can find like smaller jobs, especially like indie jobs that allow you to record on your own time or allow you to do odd hours, uh, it's a blessing. Thank them so much for allowing me to be flexible or being flexible with you. It's the sort of stuff that got me through this. Thank you for your question. Right, this one is for Harry. Thank you very much. Let's see, where should I? Yeah, I'll just do it here. Why not? It's it's cool. All right. I like the shiny 
markers. And I like the shiny prints. They look good together. The prints look good. Yeah. Sorry, I was trying to show everyone how shiny it was, but I realized I'm just like shaking it under the camera instead, which is not useful. Uh, but yeah, there we go. There's Yuzuki. <laughs> Guys, look how shiny it is. Ah! All right. Uh, what do we have next? Uh, next you have a card. Oh, card. I have a card next. Um, speaking of which, uh, I... There we go. There we go. We got it. We got cards. All right. Uh, so this is one of the cards that I pulled um, during my monthly unboxing. And I'm quite fond of all the Yuzuki cards. As you can see, the artwork is really pretty. Uh, all of them have really cool artwork like this. So uh, if I find any cards, they will go up on Streamily, etc. But let me find this one Any as bonus well. cards? Yeah. I am trying to build a deck. Part of it is I did promise years ago when the We Cross anime dropped that I would build a Yuzuki deck um, so that if anyone met up at a con, like I could take to conventions and if there were We Cross tournaments there, I could bring a Yuzuki deck to the tournament. And so I am busy fulfilling my promise. I actually still haven't pulled all the cards I need to make a full deck yet. Uh, so the promise is still in the process of being fulfilled. Please come watch me try to fulfill a promise. Um, I said I would. I'm gonna make it happen. It's surprisingly hard to build a deck just out of boosters. Who knew? Certainly does. There we go. All right, set that aside. I'll get that sleeved for you, Harry. Thank you very much. Freelancing is, huh? It is definitely difficult. Um, I think that a lot of times the work system is designed to make you not want to do it. Um, I think in about a month or so, you're gonna see a lot of freelancers on social media go, Ah, taxes! <laughs> um, because as a freelancer, you actually have to pay higher taxes for reasons. Um, and I think it's, it's interesting because it is an incredibly difficult thing to do, but at the same time, once you click into it, it can be it can be really fulfilling <laughs> and and that is something that is special and i think if anyone wants to if it's something you dream of find smaller easier places to start doing it if you have that space not necessarily oh your side hustle or do the grind but you know find spaces to do the things that excite you and build those up so that you can jump into it i know it seems like it's really hard to get into it because it is but it's not impossible and i think that if it's something you want to do you should go for it Here. Ooh, okay. We got Hibiki. This one was also kind of a while ago, but I think I think Contact Collection's still kind of going. Yeah. There's a new series. Yeah, there's a new series that was going to be airing this season. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, Contact Collection is a lot of fun. I don't play a lot of phone games. So I didn't really get into it as much, but I do love all of the designs of the characters and Hibiki in particular. Let's see. Oh, where do I, where do I, uh, I'll put it here, I'll put it here. Uh -huh. Please write, Karasho. All right. I don't speak much Russian, but I do know a little. Uh, I did actually learn a little bit for Hibiki, in fact. So, uh huh. Uh, Hibiki. I think my favorite part is because she, when she's with the rest of her crew, there's a scene where they all say in unison, thank you. And so three of them go, thank you. And she goes, spasiba. 
I was like, I love it. I love her so much. Uh, so there, there she is. There's Vierni or Hibiki, depending on where in history you are. Ta-da! Spartan got a question yes. in the chat. Ask a colorist mm -hmm. who or what are some of your inspirations when it comes to coloring? Ooh. And what is the philosophy you use when you approach? Philosophy. Ooh, oh. interesting. Um, so as a colorist, oftentimes a lot of the prints or the pieces that we do are about matching style uh, to some anime or existing pro uh, property already. And so largely that philosophy is, you know, just look at what they do and try to be close uh, if I could swing it. Uh, but I like... I like things that, that, that pop, that have a lot of energy to them. Um, not necessarily like neon colors or like high saturation, but um, the, the mood of the piece I like when they're uh, more lively, more energetic, and that's kind of something I enjoy. But also a lot of times, depending on what the piece is, we'll talk about what the final look is like. Uh, in the past few years, and patrons will know this because I've actually talked about it on our Patreon a little bit, We've been working really hard on trying to have interesting lighting, like paying attention to the time of day, the location, interesting places for light to be coming from, and to think about that sort of stuff, I really enjoy. Uh, my philosophy, I don't necessarily have a philosophy so much as just like sort of bring to life the thing that the artist already drew, because the lines there are good, they already exist, and it's just sort of growing out of that, extrapolating what the, the original artist wanted and trying to grow something from it. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for that question. All right, we have Ika! Yay! Uh, speaking of coloring and stuff, this one I had a lot of fun with because the new art style for Higurashi Go is so different from the original art style uh, of the anime and of Yukishi's original artwork. And so seeing sort of the updates, but also the way they colored it, the little gradient at the end of the hair, the way they shine it, things like that, was a lot of fun to try to emulate. I'm really proud of how this one turned out. So it's one of my favorite characters, but also this is one of my favorite pieces. Please write Nipa. That can be done. Yeah. There you go. There's Ika. Thank you, Harry. Aha! Nakamura. This is a fun one. Um, Assassination Classroom is the first show I directed for back then Funimation. And the original director was Joel McDonald. And uh, he, he asked me if I wanted to help be like uh, a co-director with him. Uh, I panicked a little bit, but it was one of my favorite manga at the time. And I think I had told him that. Um, which was also a little bit of a panic moment, but uh, it, it has really special memories for me because it is already one of my favorite manga, it has become one of my favorite anime, and the fact that uh, Joel was willing to uh, work with me on this was, was really special. He, he picked a lot of the cast on the front end, so I actually didn't know that I was going to be voicing someone in it until it happened, and... As it turns out, him having not known the characters as well as I do, he still picked one that I absolutely love, and I'm so, so happy. He's good at casting, is what I'm saying. Right. Mm -hmm. right, we have to do whatever it takes. 
to do whatever it takes. I want to win this so we can kill Koro-sensei. Yay! Thank you, Harry. Appreciate it. I play a few. I play piano and I play violin. Um, sung for work a couple times, actually. Uh, I've been in several idol anime um, and I've gotten to sing for a couple of them. I got to sing for uh, Goodness Show by Rock. I was in the band Critty Krista and I played Holmy, the bassist, but she also sings. And then very recently I was in, oh goodness, what is this called? I had a really long. Uh, Gekido. There we go. It didn't have a long name. It just had a long storyline. It's it's about idol singers, but then the plot gets weird. There's this sci-fi thing. There's a robot. There's the end of the world. Um, a lot is happening, but they are singing while that is going on. And I think I also sang for robotics notes, but that wasn't an idol singer. That was just a, uh, like a, a, a little, a Japanese traditional, like, children's song or whatever. But yeah, I've sung for work quite a few times. I also occasionally sing for not work. Uh, if you've been following our socials for a while, uh, occasionally when we can swing it, uh, Mike and I do post sort of a holiday song along with uh, Jerry Jewell, who is mm, excellent voice, excellent singer, all good things. <laughs> um, and, and we really love doing those as well. So a little bit, not as much as some people, but yeah, sometimes. Chihiro, thank you very much, Harry. Appreciate it. Good show. Good show. Big fan. And I'm not just saying that. Oh, because well, I'm in it. I don't want to say I'm a big fan of a show and then be like, because I'm in it. It was actually already a good, it was already a good show before I was in it. It didn't need my help to be a good show. Oh, I'm not literally <laughs> meant, and I'm not just saying that. It's like, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was already a good show before I came along. So I don't want to be like, mm, because I'm in it. <laughs> it is a good show, though. Um... Probably one of my favorites to work on just because I got to be real silly. You play the violin? That's awesome! Thank you! I don't play well. I'm very mediocre. <laughs> Middle. <laughs> I'm, I'm medium good. Uh, Alright. Ooh! Okay, so here's a fun one. This was a double print. Uh, so Micah has signed the aerial side yesterday. If you missed it, uh, his signing stream is on the VOD on our Twitch, so you can go check that out. But this was a lot of fun. I do like to enjoy playing characters opposite Micah. Uh, it's a shame we don't get to do it that often. I feel sad. <laughs> I feel sad we don't get to do it often. Rob. It's, you know, I, I've i seen people talk about how like, hey, once the industry knows that your partners or whatever, you will always be voicing characters who are partners or opposite each other. And it no. Lies. It hasn't happened. It Lies. hasn't happened. We've been, 
We've been partners for like a decade at this point in time. And no, it hasn't. No. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm still. Waiting. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, in our defense, we're practically the same person. That's true. And because of that, we often are the same person. I can count more times that we've voiced the same person instead of partners. Oh, easily. Just, it's not even yeah, a it's not even, it's not even a contest. We've voiced the same person so many times, and we've voiced partners almost zero. <laughs> um, but that's fine. That's fine. I'll live with it. Uh, so this one is very special because we actually did get to voice characters who interact with each other. This one was also really special to me because, like Spinny, I enjoy sweets, but I shouldn't have too many. Where is he? Where is he? There he is! Alright, he's gonna he's gonna watch me sign. There we go. <laughs> Shove him right in there. Right in there. <laughs> it's like we have one brain. Oh, also like Spinny, I am often the director on the side with a sign and a marker angrily pointing, going, NOT THAT! NOT THAT! It's so funny. So, quack, quack, quack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, constantly. Uh, so yeah, I, I do have a lot in common with this cat with wings. Uh, other than the fact that I'm not a cat and I do not have wings. Yay! Double print! Thank you very much! Woo! Yeah, Aha! Victor Inc. Speaking of sweets and characters who love them, uh, this one is for Joseph Kalamia. Very cool. I also love macarons. I have worked really hard to learn how to make them so that I don't have to keep buying them because they are expensive. I'm not very good at it, so I do have to keep buying them after all. I make very okay macarons. They're pretty good. I, I'm not mad at them, but you know, sort of a, that that reach for perfection. They taste good. I should say they taste good, but that reach for perfection of you don't want bubbles or you want it to look exactly like this or they should be this. I, I haven't quite landed on that yet. Working on it. I am still trying to get better, but uh, difficult. Right, my wellspring of wisdom will solve any case for a macaron or two. Fair! Uh, Gossip is my favorite anime. It is very good! It is very good. I love a mystery series. I started Gossip like, yay! Mystery! And then those last couple of episodes had me crying. It does get really sad at the end. I hate when an anime is like, just kidding, it's actually sad. Ugh. They trick you, they trick you every time. go. It's a victory. Thank you very much, Joseph. Barrygon is probably my favorite show where you two interact. Oh, yeah. Do interact in Fairy God. Well, one of my favorite lines in that regard is he's such a jerk in assassination classroom because of the pure delight in I. <laughs> oh man, uh, assassination classroom was fun too for that very reason. They don't Makamura and Asano don't interact a whole lot, 
so I didn't get to be like, yay, we have cool scenes together. Um, but there was there was definitely a little bit of glee inside of me that she took top score. Spoiler alert, I guess. Um, <laughs> during the exams, and I was like, yay, we didn't ever talk to each other, but they know that the other person exists, and that counts. Yeah. Uh, I've definitely seen some fan art of the two of them facing off, uh, including, I think, one that was based on an actual photo uh, with me in it. So, that's fun. <laughs> um, I wish, I wish, I think, I think there's actually, like, um, a light novel of Assassination Classroom where Asano is doing some stuff and a bunch of the Class E students are, like, creeping after him trying to figure out what he's up to and I think she's in it I think she's part of the class it's just like what is this guy doing um as he's just trying to just do his normal life and they think that he's just incredibly suspicious so I don't think that ever got translated unfortunately but I did find it in my researching yay another Rika excellent this is another fun one Rika, Higurashi in particular, um, was one of those that I loved a lot long before uh, any of this happened, so it felt really good to be able to work on it. Let's see. You can change fate as long as you believe you can. My favorite line from Rika regarding that is in goal, where she's like, it's always a surprise how poorly those dice land. And when I recorded that, I was actually in the middle of a D&D campaign as well, and I was doing very, very badly on it. And so just like, yeah, it, you know, it, mm hmm mm hmm I think, I think I was just off of a session where I never rolled higher. I didn't roll higher than a seven the whole time, and I was like, <laughs> it is bad, and those dice can land bad. Not as bad as Rika, but, you know, bad. Oh, that's mine. Thank you so much. Oh, yay! I'm glad you can make it. Thank you very much, William. Another Nakamura, love it, love her. Let's see. Seems right. As the moon's so beautiful. Oh. Tsukigakire. Tsukigakire. Ah, I liked that show too, a lot. <laughs> Ooh, I have good memories of that one. Let's see. The show or the phrase? The show. No, yeah. I meant. Huh? This. <laughs> What? <laughs> I meant the, uh, the, the, the quote. Ah, uh, that is the English translation of the title, Tsukigakire. Um, I don't know if it's really a translation as much as the localization of... Adaptation. Yeah, what they wanted it to sound like. Because it it's a very poetic way to say it. As the moon so beautiful. It's also very literal. Yeah. Tsuki. As the moon. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. That was a fun show to work on. I mean, speaking of Assassination Classroom, it was a complete role reversal because I directed Sunny Straight on Assassination Classroom and Sunny Straight directed me on Tsukiga Kire. And that was, that was a really good one. He, his direction is very, very different. Uh, he's also an artist. If you haven't been following, he's been doing a lot of comics lately. And the way he describes things has an interesting, like a very artisty 
standpoint about you know looking at the bigger picture and fitting all the things in that uh, I don't frequently get from directors who are raised up more in acting and so for him it was very much painting a picture with voices and working with him on that I think is an incredibly special experience so hey thanks for reminding me of that thank you James all right oh we have a postcard next all right We have Lucky from Fairy Tale. Woo! Uh, we only have postcard sizes of this one. Um, sorry, but uh, they are in the shop if you want. I know this was a very last minute edition. A lot of people didn't see the postcards come in. So just so you know, they are there. Lucky was my first recurring character. She had a name and everything. Oh, I have so many memories now. This is all right, uh, uh, um, silver? Black. Mm, I don't even know what I'm gonna sign on this. Uh, how does this, okay, I'll do some of it here and then some of it here. Perfect, perfect, nailed it. Uh, include something related to Locky. Sure, okay. Uh, I will do a little morning star. <laughs> There we go. That makes sense, right? Right? Because she has... Her attack is the... Anyway. <laughs> Thank you very much. Got lucky. And another postcard! Yay! What's a, what's a quote or a note that I can include for Lockie? She does have all of those weird attacks. Let's include... The distance between the two is forever. Hope we can see you in the sequel. Uh, who knows? <laughs> uh, I, I, I hope it too. I do love Lockie's attacks because they're so strange. Because um, she has attacks like the distance between the two is forever. And then just at the very end, she has one called like God Punch. It's like, okay, <laughs> straightforward at this point in time. Yay, another Lockie. Woo. More Yuzuki! Yay! Woo. Love it! Let's see. <laughs> and a quote. Uh -huh. Here we go. This is the one that the game loves quoting all the time. Hello, Selector. Uh, just to clarify, by the way, the cards, the postcards that are uh, being signed right now are not the same ones as the ones we send out to patrons. Yes. Uh, these are the ones that we sell at uh, conventions. Yes. Uh, so as a patron, uh, if you're a patron of the top tier, you actually do get a monthly postcard. Those ones are a little bit smaller 
but they have alternate artwork on them or alternate versions of the art. Um, variants. Yeah, some variants that only patrons get. So those ones are not available for sale anywhere else. It's, you have to be a patron in order to get them. Uh, but if you want these cards, you can get them from us at cons or from stream only events, as it turns out. Uh, so yeah, we got got a little lot of different different types of cards, but yeah, these are not the same cards as the patron ones. Yuzuki, thank you. Nakamura! I love her so much. To Katie. Thank you, Katie. Dry it off a little. There we go. Thank you, Katie. Oh, that's mine. Yay! <laughs> Glad you could make it. Woo! You know, of all the things signings require, I did not realize that the post its. Uh, the amount of post-its would be so, so high. It had not occurred to me. All right. There she is. There's a girl. All right. Victorique. Hmm. Armando. You are no match for my wellspring of wisdom. Yee. She is. Thank you, Armando. Ah, ah, we're fine. We're fine. It's fine. Everything's good. <laughs> you know, it's so funny because you just said that this, the music makes the stream so calming. <laughs> That's literally the last comment that something left. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my chill stream. Um... I mean, that's kind of it, though, because, like, for example, the unboxings I do, the Wii Cross boosters, are typically also quite chill. I'm always like, oh, look at the cute art. I love cute art. Oh, look at the cute art. I love cute art. And then, uh, for those of you who didn't make the stream, I, I pulled an ultra rare, which I was not expecting, and then just panicked. Scream. I screamed and pa just spent the whole time panicking over relatively calming music, if I recall correctly. Just being like, I don't know what to do! <sighs> and like the chat was like, you, it's okay, you're gonna be okay. I'm like, but I'm I've never seen an ultra rare before! <laughs> um, so, you know, come for the good moments. Come for the chill stream. Stay for me screaming occasionally, going, I don't know what to do, I'm panicking. Uh, it's good, it's good time, it's a good time. Uh, speaking of extreme emotions, sure. Given the nature of shows like Higurashi, uh -huh. uh, voicing characters in shows that have uh, like very heavy emotions, mm -hmm. right? Um, seems like it would be stressful emotionally and vocally. Yes. Is that the case? Um. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, people talk a lot about vocally taxing sessions. You'll see. That, that term come up a lot, and it is about like the yelling and the shouting. Oftentimes it's usually like for fighting video games, but for Higurashi it's for a lot of things. Uh, the infamous, uh, fans call it the spaghetti episode, and if you know, you know, and if you don't, well, you can guess. Um... <laughs> uh, 
And the spaghetti episode was vocally taxing and emotionally taxing. Um, seriously, as much as Igarashi is quite good, warnings all over the place yeah. in terms of what's in it. Um, but yeah, so you, you have to take care of yourself. It, I think some people want to be like, I'm very cool and tough and I can yell and scream all I want and make it happen. And I don't necessarily recommend that. I feel like, you know, as with all things, it's a muscle. You gotta warm up ahead of time and then take care of it afterwards. And you will often find, you can get like coaches or teachers who will help you train to scream and yell correctly so that you don't hurt yourself as much, but it will hurt. And if you do too much of it, it will hurt a lot for a long time and sometimes it can stay with you. And so, for, for example, with that one with uh, Michelle who was directing, she gave me a lot of breaks in between to make sure that we didn't just tear everything up for that one episode and then ruin it because, you know, the very next episode we're in a space where we pretend it didn't happen and the voice has to sound completely clear and natural again and not completely cut up from all the screaming that was happening the previous one. So yeah, sometimes it can hurt. Sometimes you have to go on vocal rest, usually for a day or two, sometimes a lot longer just to give your throat and your vocal cords that space to heal and get better so that you're not overworking them. Let's see what we got. All right, and we have, yeah, hat kid. Fun fact, and I do love this, is that when she grows up, her name changes to Hat Adult. <laughs> this never happens in the game, but it did. There were talks. <laughs> All right, this is for Evan. Oh, become one with the fire! <laughs> she's, she's got some chaotic energy. <laughs> she's, a she's, a, she's a gremlin. She's a gremlin, but it's fine. It's fine. We love her that way. Hat kid. All right, hat kid. Thank you, Evan. Anytime I have to sit through Nika's suffering, it ruins me, which is to say a lot. There is so much. At a certain point in time, I was like, come on, does this really have to be another season? Can't we just call it and be like, good enough, good enough, you get the point. You get the point? Ugh, so sad. I'm so sad for her. She just, she just wants what any of us want, which is to sit in a tea room and drink lots of tea. You know, the normal thing that people want. <laughs> Can't have that. Can't have that. Oh, man. Yay! Speaking of, we just want to sit in a room and drink tea. Uh, maybe that's my type. Crap, I didn't think about it until just now. Because normally people are like, well, what type do you get cast as? And I'm like, I don't have a type. I'm such a variety of... Oh, maybe it's people who like tea. Who are elegant tea drinkers and wear pretty dresses. And are also little gremlins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Either <laughs> chaos gremlin or sassy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm having the revelation is coming in real time. It. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Please write. Can you name them? All right. If I took you long enough, Mr. Reaper. Go. Thank you very much. All right, another question for you. Yes. How do you record for shows uh, during the pandemic? Has Ooh. anything changed since you started recording in the pandemic? 
Interesting. Um, dang, that's gonna be a long answer, but I'll try to condense it. Uh, a lot of different companies came up with a lot of different solutions, but the short version is that a bunch of voice actors very quickly had to build sound booths inside of their own living spaces and get mics that were functional for that. And, broadcast quality. Yeah, broadcast quality microphones and record from home, uh, much like work from home. Uh, you work remotely, so the director would be at their place and they'd be either over like video chat or something along those lines. The engineer would be in their space and the engineering is the hardest part because they would have to have access to the actual rig in some way, shape, or form. And that, the, rig would be uh, the computer that holds all the magic, uh, where the actual show is being stored, things like that. And again, it was very different across, like all these different companies all came up with different solutions. So there's no one version of that that's happening either. But from the voice actor's point of view, it was, we all had to learn real quick how to, <laughs> how to make a room that sounds good and have broadcast quality microphones and where to put them. All the stuff that the engineers were doing back in the day because they were professionals and knew how to set these things. And uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of voice actors also very suddenly learned to appreciate all the small things that engineers do that weren't immediately evident because a lot of stuff happens outside of the sessions. And so there was that and a lot of Things were recorded, so it basically happened online. You'd be in a real-time call session, the director directing, the engineer at their place, engineering, and the actor acting, all in separate places wherever they lived. And it is a process that I think nearly everybody loves. There are, of course, a lot of hiccups about tech difficulties and not being in the same room and worrying about, say, sound quality and things like that. But it opened up the door to have some of the most amazing casts ever. Uh, not only from people who are usually in LA or, or Texas, but also people from around the world. We had have international talent who could suddenly be in anime and video games and things like that in ways that they couldn't before. And it, I think it was good. Honestly, as a director and as an actor, I love it. Uh, I loved it so much being able to work with so many people who I could only dream of working with before was amazing and then being in casts alongside people who i can only dream of working with before was amazing and uh, some companies uh have chosen elected not to do that anymore which is for me a bit of a disappointment there are some who are still doing that so again it's a mixed bag uh i wish that we could continue to i think it has opened up the way for better dubs for better video game dubs for better anime dubs and all that uh even original products and it was, and it makes a lot more opportunities for people who don't necessarily have the resources to move to LA right now. It's an expensive city to live in. Um, also good for accessibility. Yeah, great for accessibility. Like, it's, it is hard uh, to to make it to certain places, especially right now at the stage we are in the pandemic. A lot of disabled people still can't go into the studio, and to shut them out of recording. Uh, feels weird. It feels weird to give yourself fewer options, in my opinion. And so uh, I think that as difficult as it was and as much as a lot of people had to learn a lot of things real quick and how it did shut out a lot of people who necessarily who couldn't necessarily afford to suddenly upgrade to a broadcast quality mic and I think that was a huge downside. Um, the space we're in now where people can go into the studio, but also can still record from their own spaces is kind of my ideal. And uh, I mean, I know as fans, what do you think? I know that a lot of people really love the way dubs were going in the past few years because of it, but you know, the audience, the audience matters in this case. Like, how did you feel about it? Uh, someone in chat says, definitely think remote recording has allowed for some amazing cast ensembles. Yes, uh, and that's the thing. It's, it's great to have people from so many different places. I had never once thought that I'd be able to work with international talent. I remember working on a project a while ago where the director said that there's this one actor who they loved and who actually loved like the project that they were working on, but they lived in a different country and they had no idea how they were going to be able to get a hold of them. And so they were just sadly saying, guess it won't happen. And now in this space, it absolutely can. And I love that. I love that if the director wants someone and that actor wants to be a part of it, it can happen. Mm -hmm. So, 
what it was like. It was scary on the front end. It was a little difficult, uh, but the way that it turned out, I think the outcome was very, very positive. It became more streamlined too. Yes, uh, it was very clunky at the front. A lot of the solutions had to be cycled through before we found ones that really worked. But I am happy with the outcome. Yeah, we work with some uh, people, we know some people who are extremely talented overseas, like in Australia yeah. or in the UK, and seeing mm -hmm. their names. Can you see them in anime? It was so good! Yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, yeah, and, and on the front end, it was hard. A lot of things were inconsistent. You could, like, listen and tell uh, that it, it was, oh, this was recorded in 20 different rooms. Uh, but we learned a lot, you know? And also, we are in a space where some a lot of studios have been reopened. If you can't afford to do that or don't want to, that option to go in is available. And I think that that's a really good balance because I know a lot of people felt left out when they couldn't build their own home studios. And the fact that they can go in now, uh, this is, in my in my opinion, uh, this, is, this is a really good balance of where to be. And I hope that we maintain it. I really do. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Yay, Chi! Oh, am I by? That's fine. Oh, uh, Chihiro. <laughs> Ever heard of a duster? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Chihiro. Uh, yep, yep, okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Chi. Chi. Chihiro. I feel bad because my personality is more Madoka than Chihiro. And every time he stayed up late working and forgetting to take care of himself and being like, Oh, I just, I forgot I exist because I was doing work for so long and Chihiro gets mad at him. I feel like I'm yelling at myself <laughs> for it. It was, it was, <laughs> um, it was difficult to get through because like, oh no. I chastise me <laughs> as I do this, but it's fine. Thank you very much, Kachihiro. boys another combo print Let's see gold 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 there you are. very straightforward please write the character's name sure all right yay thank you Uh, going off an earlier question, sure. what's the process like of constructing a sound booth? Ooh, um, that's a better question for an engineer if you want to know how to, and a better question for Micah if you want to know what it was like. <laughs> um, 
Uh, tears. <laughs> uh, sweat. And a lot of screwing up. <laughs> um... It depends. You'll see a lot of people will buy pre-made sound booths like like a whisper room or studio bricks or something like that. They are very very good. They are also very very expensive, and you absolutely don't need that, especially when you're getting started. Um, most engineers recommend setting up something like you can use moving blankets, for example. Uh, but also, it's really important to sound treat the room, which is different from just putting up stuff to muffle sound or make sure things don't get through and it depends on your room and the shape and things like that so if you're looking for advice you have to get very very specific and in fact there were some groups i worked with where part of the session was they were like come early and you're gonna have to turn on your webcam because the engineer wants to look around your room and tell you what to do uh, and they would be like oh hey that corner is going to be a problem or hey if that's there you need to cover this up with this type of material and there would be engineers who would just you'd have to hold up your webcam and be like this is my room i'm very embarrassed by it but have a look uh and they would help you sound treat your room for it but the process was a little bit trial and error very um varying levels of difficulty but we did it i say we we did it! <laughs> we did it! We did it! The two of us did it! We collectively did it! <laughs> Alright, and here is to Andrew. Ah, this gold doesn't show up well at all! Awesome! Uh, for the record, they're actually alternate cards that have like golden signatures on them, so I thought gold would be good for this, but it's very hard to read. So you get your name in gold, you get your quote in black, it'll be fine. Uh, here we go. Alright, now we won't write anything on top of the instructions on the card just in case you actually want to play with it <laughs> um, so you can still read all of all of her entry rules which uh this is actually a pretty good one um as soon as you enter you have to force your opponent to vanish one of their signy which is very useful if you don't play you don't know but that's it's good it's a good power it's good power uh good card good power all right uh thank you andrew all right and that looks like that is it for this stream so thank you so much for being here i really appreciate it if you had a good time and you're not a regular make sure you are following micah and i stream fun art challenges weekly every friday uh and of course i also have my monthly we cross booster unboxings so if you want to learn anything about the game or just look at really cool anime art with me while listening to chill music and hearing me panic occasionally like today those are all options uh, you can also back us on Patreon. Patrons get to vote on some of the things we draw. So a lot of prints you saw today were voted on by patrons. And patrons also get to uh, answer monthly surveys that define a lot of what we do for our weekly drawing challenge streams. Uh, that's, uh, that's been our stream. I'll see you. I think our next stream will be next Friday for our art challenge. And it is patron-powered night, so if you're not a patron yet, you still have time to sign up now, fill out our survey, and give us all sorts of silly things to draw for Friday. And we shall see you then.